In our last video, when we were discussing the MP44 trunnions that we're making for Pete, we had completed op 1 and 2, and then op 3, boring out the hole, cutting for the gas piston. We've since gone back and we've worked on op 4, which is to bore a hole and to drill the hole for the uh, locking shoulder to drive out the locking shoulder. Our next step on this was to come in with a reduced cut carbide end mill. It's a solid carbide, four inches in length. And the reason for that is that we needed to get down here to enlarge this hole to the proper size. So we have a hole all the way through. It's set up in the vise on a set of parallels so that as it came through on a spiral motion, you could cut the chips, the coolant coming at this angle would hopefully flush all that out and we'd have a clean cut. It worked well for the 1018 test blocks that we had, but the first 4140 hardened block we had, the older carbide end mill that we had, it shattered the tips. We thought the problem with that was the fact that it's an older carbide end mill and we've used it a lot. So we got a hold of the manufacturer, in this case helical. Uh, we got a new end mill, brand new, which we had it turned down so it's reduced diameter behind the cutting shoulders so that when we're not rubbing anywhere, so this doesn't actually touch on the inside. We checked for proper speeds and feeds from helical. And then we set the part up, started to cut the first one and it shattered the tips on the end mill. So, we're back at the drawing board. This is an expensive cutter. A four inch solid carbide cutter by helical is not the least bit, expensive, or least bit cheap. It's very expensive. So what we decided to do at this point was to change the procedure by which we're doing the machining. What we're trying to cut out is this hole all the way up to the barrel support. And then at the same time go through and then cut this out as well as this. So the next step, cut this out. But because of the chip buildup on this, and that's after stopping it, flushing it, stopping it, blowing it out, stopping it, flushing it. In the, in the procedure we were doing, we still had enough chip buildup that it destroyed a brand new carbide end mill. So now, we have all of them drilled with the hole. We're going through and we're cutting it on the initial slot as a roughing cut. Then we're going to cut out the magazine well on the back side so that as a rough cut, not the finished dimensional cut. We're not going to cut the ejector groove, we're not going to put the notches in. All we're doing is we're cutting a big opening here so that when we now come in with the end mill, there's a place for all the chips to go down and on the back side. So this end mill cut will now look like this all the way down and there will be plenty of room here as we're cutting it down to remove the chips and there's plenty of room here for the coolant to get in as it's running. Hopefully by changing our procedure from just opening the hole and then going in and doing our cut to one where this cut is done, this rough end cut is done, and then we open up this hole for a fine finish. Um, that will preclude breaking any more really expensive carbide end mills. Unfortunately everything's a learning process and what we thought would work because we've done it in 1018 actually didn't work in hardened material, which is what the 4140 hardened blocks are. So, more on the 
MP44 trunnions. We've already got the majority of them cut like this. The next will be this step here and hopefully we'll be back on track with these trunnions by Wednesday or Thursday. Go to gunlab.net for more on making trunnions and the machining aspect of making a gun.